How does a gyroscope work? That's a question that's bothered me a lot over the years. If I try to suspend this wheel from this point right here, it'll fall over if it's not spinning. But if it is spinning, it won't fall over. I'm guessing if you'd never seen a gyroscope before, that you would bet that it would fall over whether it was spinning or not. And then when you saw it not fall over, as if defying gravity, you would be amazed. Well, I think we were all amazed the first time we saw it happen. But we typically see this when we're little kids. And little kids are amazed at things every day. I remember being amazed that the moon would follow me as we went down the road at night in the car. And my parents would always try to explain things to me. For the gyroscope, they would say, angular momentum, precession, don't worry about it, somebody understands it. Well, I wanted to understand it, so I would play with my little gyroscope. I noticed if it wasn't spinning, and I pushed it here, or equivalently here, it would go in the direction that I push it. But if it was spinning this way, pushing it here would cause it to go like that. If it was spinning this way, pushing it here would cause it to go like that. So the rule seems to be that wherever you push on the spinning wheel, it turns as if you pushed a non-spinning wheel 90 degrees downstream. And that behavior just didn't seem right. I wanted to know more, and this was before the internet. I went to the library and spent a day there looking through all the books I could find on gyroscopes. I had to look through all the books because none of them would answer my question. They all had about the same thing in it, a picture of a wheel or a top with some vectors and some equations that I didn't understand. Now we have the internet, and you can bring those up almost instantly. But they still don't answer the question. A couple years later, I found myself in a Physics 101 class. And when we got to the chapter on gyroscopes, there was the picture of the wheel with the vector and the equations. Only this time, I completely understood it because we had just derived it. There was no mystery. The equation told me that the wheel would turn as if you pushed on it 90 degrees downstream. But that wasn't very satisfying. It still didn't seem right. So I'd come back and think about this problem every now and then over the years. And then one day, Eureka, it hit me. I figured it out. And I am now no longer bothered about the gyroscope's behavior. I want to share my epiphany with you because I suspect that this gyroscope funny business might be keeping some of you up late at night, like it did me. I think the problem comes from our misunderstanding of Newton's laws of motion that we learned in middle school. In particular, Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. Solving for A, we get acceleration equals force divided by the mass. So if we keep the force constant and double the mass, we get half the acceleration. For a given mass, if you double the force, you get twice the acceleration. And that seems reasonable. The thing is, though, that before this equation, for thousands of years, people thought that things would just go in the direction that you push them. And we look at this equation, and go is not in the equation. Go would be v for velocity. Instead, we have a. Acceleration is a change in velocity over time. It's very easy to miss this subtle difference. And I think it was my failure to see this difference which caused me to have this uneasy feeling about the gyroscope. Imagine that we're out in space where there's no gravity or air resistance. And we have this ball, and it's moving along at some constant speed. We'll say it's moving in the x direction, and perpendicular to that, we'll have a y direction. Imagine that we have a way to apply a force to the ball, but only in the y direction. We turn the force on, and the ball starts to go up in the y direction. If you stop the force, then it will just go in a straight line. Leaving the force on, it goes faster and faster and faster in the y direction. But it will never lose the x component of its velocity. So things don't necessarily go in the direction that you push them. Now I'd like to do a demonstration. I have invisible Sally with her invisible clipboard. As the ball goes over Sally, she'll push up on it. So here's Sally, here's the ball, and it goes off like that. Notice we wouldn't expect the ball to go like that in the direction that she pushed it. Now we'll make a little wheel out of this ball. The wheel's spinning horizontally, and it's got just one particle. As it goes over Sally, she'll push up on it one time, and pew, 
it tilts up. So the wheel has gone hor from horizontal up to some angle. And notice that the high point is 90 degrees downstream from where the force was applied. Well, hopefully by now, everyone can see what was my big aha moment. Notice I don't know anything new about the universe. I understand how my thinking was wrong, and that's what caused me to have a problem with the gyroscope. I can now see things easier in circular motion that were easier to see in linear motion. Angular momentum is just a manifestation of linear momentum, though we don't know what causes that. We can use Newton's laws of motion to get us to the moon because they tell us how things are, even though they don't tell us why. If you'd like something new to lose sleep over, then you might want to ponder what is inertia? And how does that work?